Welcome back. I'll be presenting some more historical facts today. Since the debates between Andi Muslims and non-Andi Muslims are rife these days on social media, I get to see some non-Andi Muslims present certain arguments that are not factually correct. And like I said in my last video, I'll try and present facts that are historically correct and backed by original records without any bias. Someone sent me a tweet asking why Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, the founder of the Amdiya Muslim community, had written that the peace that was available uh, under the British rule was not to be found anywhere, not even in Mecca and Medina. So I went through the works of Hazrat Mirza Sahib and found a quote where he says, a piece of writing, that the task of propagating Islam that can be rendered under the British rule cannot be done even in Mecca or Medina. Now, to analyze this, let's go back in time to Hejaz, where both the holy cities of Mecca and Medina are situated. It had remained under the Hashemid rule since the early 10th century all the way through to 1924-25. Hijaz was an emirate and the inherited title of the ruler was Sharif. In the, in the early 16th century, the Sharif of Mecca acknowledged the Ottoman Caliphate and by the mid 19th century, precisely the time frame in question here as we speak, the Ottoman Caliph had installed his wali or governor in Mecca. This resulted in two parallel administrative systems running alongside the Emirate of the Sharif and the Wilaya or governorship of the Ottomans. This dichotomy led to a constant friction that resulted in conflicts and in fighting. And the point to remember here is that this was intra-Muslim infighting or Muslim versus Muslim to be clearer. This infighting and the power play dynamics destroyed the peace of Hejaz, Mecca and Medina that is, to a point where citizens were constantly living in a war zone. Forces from either side carrying guns and ammunition would roam the Masjid al-Haram around the Holy Kaaba and in Medina in the vicinity of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's mausoleum, his sacred grave. And works of history confirm that there was absolutely no peace in the cities at all, both the holy cities whatsoever. And this tension with time escalated to a point where later on in the early 1900s, the Ottomans appointed Fakhri Pasha in Hijaz with the intent to abolish the Sharifid rule. Hence, the Sharif of Mecca got in touch with none else but the British in Egypt to back him in his revolt against the Ottomans. And the British provided backing. And with this British backing, this khadim e haraman Sharifan, the servant of the two holy shrines, was at the service of the British Empire. And I won't quote any historian here, but refer you to the original correspondence between the Sharif and the British High Commissioner at Cairo, Sir McMahon. I'll give you the shelf mark in uh, the description below so that you can feel free to access them if you can. I do have copies but I don't yet have the permission from the British Library, but when I do, maybe I will show you the records someday, the original ones. Now, as the tension turned into a hardcore military conflict between the Ottomans and the uh, Sharifs, they both stationed their troops on either side of the Kaaba and bombed at each other's forces. The shells in this crossfire would hit the walls of the Holy Kaaba, causing colossal damage to the structure. The Kiswa, the cover of the Kaaba, would catch fire on occasions. The holy black stone, known as the Hajr al-Aswad, would be damaged on many occasions. And 
This Fakhri Pasha is recorded to have stalked the Masjid al Nabawi, and behold, the tomb of the Holy Prophet وسلم, with ammunition, threatening to blow everything up if the Sharifs proceeded towards the Holy Mosque. Now, during these turbulent times, when Mecca and Medina were devoid of peace and stability, Ahmad Murshid, a Saudi historian, has recorded eyewitness accounts by the local general public. They mention how their lives were absolutely paralyzed and had turned into a living hell, how no means of earning livelihood were left for the locals of Hejaz. The accounts are simply heart-wrenching. I mean, can you imagine an eyewitness tells how the Ottomans left a dead horse lying in the desert and the locals ran to cut pieces off of it to work as a one-time meal and how some hunger-stricken locals of Medina caught a cat and took it to the butchers to slaughter it for them so they could share it to cook and eat. And the butcher is said to have agreed on the condition that he too would get a share. And then there are accounts about seeing the holy shrines in fire and being desecrated uh, during these conflicts is something I leave for you to read yourself. I find it really hard to even narrate them. Murshid's book is titled Taba Wazikriyat al Hibba, meaning Medina and the Memories of the Beloved. So I leave you, I'm sorry, with these bitter memories of the beloved land, the land most dear to us all, so that you can go and read and find out about more facts for yourself. Like I said, I won't give any conclusions. I'll continue to give facts. Thank you very much for watching.